Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Advanced Strategies for Spreads, a must for Forex traders arsenal. Good morning, Ron. How are you? Now, before we get started this morning, <clears throat> I do want to go over the Nadex risk disclaimer. Basically, anytime you're trading, whether you're using binary options, spread, or other instruments, there is risk involved and you should never trade with money you cannot afford to lose. I'd like everyone to take just a few moments to read over the Nadex Risk Disclaimer, and then we'll get started on advanced strategies for spreads. Now, for those that do not know me, my name is Gail Mercer, and I've been trading over 15 years now. I actually started out with a company that programmed indicators in simply fell in love with the price bar. I specialize in price action, volume analysis, and divergence because I believe they are leading indicators. I'm also a frequent contributor for stocks and commodities, Traders World, and Top Shelf. I've also been a speaker at Traders Expo, Traders World Online Expo, and the Wyckoff Volume Conference. I'm also the author of Trading Nadex Binary Options Using Currencies, Trading Nadex Binary Options, Keeping It Simple Strategies, as well as the New Trader's Guide to Trading Nadex Binary Options and Spreads. Each of these books can be purchased on either Amazon or my website. Now, why trade spreads, okay? Number one, it allows you to limit your risk on entry. You also have a variable payout depending on where the price expires. And this is the main difference between a binary option that has a defined maximum payout of $100 versus a spread which could have a variable payout. It also allows you to capitalize on Forex market reports within a limited risk environment. This prevents some of the catastrophic losses that we saw, for example, during the Swiss National Bank fiasco. Because you have capture risk, you know exactly what you can lose if the market goes against you and the market can always go against you. Now, first I want to explain the anatomy of a spread. And this is the question that I get asked the most. When you are buying a spread, the floor is used to limit your risk. Now, why would you buy a spread? Well, you believe the market is going to go up, okay? So what you want to do is look for a floor that is close to where price is currently trading to limit your risk. The ceiling, which is the number on the right-hand side of the spread, is used to limit your profits. So in this example, this number over here on the left-hand side is going to limit your risk. The number on the right-hand side is going to limit your profit, okay? Does everybody understand that? Now, if you are buying the spread, okay, you're looking at the number on the right because this is what's going to limit your risk, okay? In this case, the euro dollar was trading at 1.1774, okay? The closest spread to price was 1780, okay? To enter a long position, the price was at 1.1783. The difference between the offer price, which is what you're paying, and the floor is your risk, or $3 in this case. Now, the profit potential is the ceiling minus your entry price of $17.83 or $97. Now, <clears throat> remember I said it's variable because at expiration, let's say that the price expired 
at 1.1793, okay? What would your profit be if that was the expiration price? It would be the difference between this price and your entry or $10. Does everybody see how I calculated that? And again, this is your profit, okay? Your initial risk is also returned to your account, okay? Some people don't realize that the risk is actually returned if it expires in the money, okay? Now, what about if you believe the market is going to go down? If you believe the market is going to go down, you want to sell a ceiling that is closest to price. Again, using the same current price, the price that is closest to this would be the bottom one at 1.1780. In this case, your risk is the ceiling, which is 1.1780 minus this number over here, which gives you $11 for risk, okay? Now your profit potential is limited by the number on the right, which is 1.1680, okay? Your maximum profit potential would be $89 if price moved the entire width of the spread. Otherwise, you would take the price on expiration, and let's just say at expiration it was $17.50. Then you have made the difference between what you paid on entry and where the expiration is, or $19. Are the Nadex fees the same with spreads as with binaries? Yes, they are, Jason. Now, the common mistake that I see a lot of traders make, because at least 10 times a week, I have someone send me their order and they'll say, what did I do? You know, I didn't make what I thought I was going to make. Quite often, it is because they bought the ceiling. In other words, maybe price, well, for example, in this case, it's 1.1774. So they bought this one, okay? Well, the difference between 1880 and 1774 is what? Well, that, it's this one, I'm sorry. The difference between 1774 and 1780 is what? Six, okay? So if they paid on entry, if they paid 1774, there's only room to make $6. Does that make sense? No, but what happens is they do not realize that the cap when buying is limited by the number on the right hand side, okay? Or they do not realize that the cap when going short is on the left-hand side. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Now, there are different spread strategies that you can use, okay? You can have a directional spread. That simply means if your bias is to the upside, then you want to buy a directional spread, which means it will go up. You would buy a floor. If you believed that the market was going to go down, you'll do a directional spread by selling the ceiling, okay? Then you also have what's known as a straddle or a strangle. In both of these, you actually do both. You buy and sell a spread. The only difference between the two is the straddle is an at the money spread and a strangle is an out of the money spread. Does everybody understand that? 
That's the only difference between these two. So for example, the US CAD, the current price is trading at 21.2867. You have a bias to the long side. So you buy the US CAD 2860 to 3060 daily spread at the offer, which is 2878. Your risk on entry in a directional spread in this example is $18. Okay, now again, if we go back and look at it, the first thing that we look at is where is price currently trading? 28.67, our bias is to the long side, okay? So we need to look on the left-hand side number for one that is close to 28.67, okay? That would be this number at 2860. Does everybody understand that? Now this is a directional to the long side. To enter this market, you pay the number under the offer. Now you can also change that. Let's say you didn't want to pay 2878. Let's say that you wanted to change it to 2875 you can actually type in that number and if the spread reaches down and touches it, if there's sufficient buyers and sellers, then you will get filled. Does everybody understand that? Now again, this is a directional because you have a bias to the long side. Let's look at other examples. Now in this case, the US CAD is trading at 28.67. In this case, you're not sure where it's going to go. You, you know, you have no bias. It's considered a neutral position, okay? In this case, you could buy the USD CAD at 28.60 to 30.60 daily spread at the offer 28.78, but then you would sell the 1.2660 to 1.2860 spread, the risk combined is $28. Now that breaks down to $18 on the long spread, $10 on the short spread. Does everybody understand that? <clears throat> Now, if you do this type of spread, you're risking $28 total, okay? And there are multiple ways that this could work out, okay? It could be that the long spread moves up and results in a profit, but the short spread actually loses money. Or the short spread could make money and the long spread would lose money. Then again, you might lose what you paid on both, which is $28. Does everybody understand this one? Okay, let's look at another way to use them. You could add binaries with them, okay? And in this case, the euro dollar is currently trading at 1814, okay? In this case, let's say that you sell the euro dollar 1.1730 to 1.1830 the price is 1810, so you have $20 of risk on the spread. Then you turn around and buy a binary option that is out of the money for $18.50 in risk. Again, you're neutral. You're not sure what the market's going to do, but you are expecting a move, okay? 
In this case, you have a total risk of $38.50 on both of them. Now, it could be that the binary option expires greater than 1822, in which case you would make money on the binary option. Then again, it could be that the market moves down, okay? In this case, it could actually move down the width of the spread. Again, you would make the difference between what you paid on entry and what the expiration was. Would you typically just leave these in place until expiration or monitor them and exit one early to cut your loss? I typically monitor mine, Ron. Very seldom do I enter a trade and then walk away. Um, I, I generally do sit and watch it. Okay, any questions about this one? Okay, now um, I want, before we look at some live examples, I want to give everyone my website, which is tradershelpdesk.com. Also my email address, which is gm at tradershelpdesk.com. And I want to look at some examples this morning. And I want you to remember in the examples that it is for educational purposes only. I don't have any type of bias as to the market direction. I'm here to teach you not to give out any type of advice. And I'm going to move this over. We're going to do one actually on the um, Euro Yen and I'm just gonna stick this here. Now the Euro Yen is overextended on every chart that I've looked at, the 15, the 60, and the 240. So let's say that I believe this is going to go down, okay? This is my bias, is I believe it's going to go down, okay? So I could look at the daily spreads, okay? And let's see what our options are, the current price is at 134.57, okay? Which number on the right-hand side is closest to this, okay? Well, you've got 134.85, okay? And that's really about it, okay? So, again, this is an example only if you have the bias to the long side, you could actually sell this one and it would be a risk of $31. Let's say that you said, well, I actually think it's going to continue up, okay? The closest spread that is available to price is 133.60. But of course, this is a 3 p.m. There are multiple spreads here that you can select. Okay, let's go look at the 7 a.m. Well, the 7 a.m. you have a 134. Okay, let's look at the 11 a.m. See if there is one closer. Okay, if you have a bias to the upside, you have one that's available at 134.73. Okay, so now we have both a long and a short spread, okay? You could do the same thing with the binaries. Let's say that we actually think that maybe short term this is going to go down, but overall it's going to go up for the day. Notice that price is currently trading at 134.59, okay? So you could actually take, if your bias is to the short side, you could do a 134.47. This one would have 20, 
2475 in risk. Let's say that you have a bias to the long side, okay? Price is currently trading at 134.58. You could potentially get 134.77 for $15. Now, I'm going to mark on here what we actually have. If I can shrink this up enough. Okay, we have two binary options. So we have one at 134.47 and one at 34.77, okay? So here, we're going to put one at 47. And we're going to color this line red. That just lets us know that it's a short right here at 47. We also have a long at 77. So we're going to come up here and put one. We're going to leave it blue, and that just tells us that we have a long binary option at the blue line. Now let's mark where the spreads are on the Short spread, we're at 134.55. That would be about here. We're going to color it red and we're going to make it a dotted line. So we know this is a spread, okay? Then on the long spread, we're at 73. Again, we're going to come in here and just put a line on here at 73. and we're going to make that a dotted line as well. Now you can see we have the binary options right up here. The spreads are right down here. Does everybody see that? Now the one that is the longer term is the short spread, and that would be this one. So I'm going to change that again to the dot dash dash. So that tells me that's at 3 p.m. and the rest of these are 1 p.m. Now, what can potentially happen between now and 3 p.m. or 1 p.m.? There's a couple of things that could happen. This could actually stop all of a sudden and decide to go up, okay? in which case you could make money on both the long spread and the long binary, okay? Or you could lose money on these two, but this could come down to 134.21 or 133.88. Now in this case, you have a likelihood of making money on both the short option and the short spread. Also notice that on all of the binaries, these are out of the money binary options. That means that you have a very low risk on these binary options, okay? It would be very easy or feasible for you to cover the risk on the losing position by having the binary make money or the spread make money to cover the binary. Does everybody understand that? And notice how close together these lines are, okay? If I had opted to do a binary down here or a binary way up here, that would probably be too far out. Do y'all understand that? And in this case, we really don't care which way it moves, as long as it moves. Does everybody understand that? Any questions at all on this?
I generally do set up my spreads as close to at the money as possible. And then I use the out of the money to lower the risk on the binary run. And you can do this. There's so many ways that you can combine these. Um, you could do a daily and then do a two hour for the shorter term, or you could do, you know, various daily binary options in combination with the daily spread. Now, there are multiple ways that you can build these. And the one thing that you want to have is some volatility in the market. In other words, you want the market to be moving. This is probably not a strategy that I would use, for example, when the market is barely moving. Uh, I probably would not do these. One other thing while we're here, only because I have received a lot of questions about this, and I just wanted to show everyone. Um, down here at the bottom of my screen, do you see how you have the trading tutorials? Now, sometimes when you first open your Nadex demo, this will pop up and you probably clicked here and you minimized it. These are actual tutorials that will show you how to open your charts, how to place a trade, how to insert indicators on your chart. Um, for example, if I just click this arrow over here, do you see how there's one that says technical indicators and drawing tools? You know, if you click on it, then the video pops up for you. So. For those of you that do not know how to, for example, put an indicator on the chart, just scroll through here and watch some of these videos. They have some really great videos here. Okay, any other questions today? I do want to thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope you learned different ways to actually place a trade. Is there a place I can go to learn more about the indicators, what they mean and how to use them? Um, I, I suggest going to the Nadex webinar archive, Jason. We have a lot of videos there from webinars that we have done previously. And a lot of us actually teach you how to use indicators in there. Well, thank you, Al. Merry Christmas to you as well. All right, everybody have a wonderful holiday and I look forward to seeing you in the new year.